What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here and it's Top 10 Thursday. But this week we're doing something a little bit different. Since we're just a couple days before Halloween, I wanted to try and do something a little bit more spectacular and really kind of give credit to some good experiences that are completely overlooked. Now, obviously I love horror. I think scares are so fantastic. But something else I find interesting is the fact that we live in the age of the video game renaissance where there are so many good games coming out that it's impossible to keep up. So even though some of these games that you see today you may have heard of, most people never even bothered trying them. So these are my picks of the top 10 best horror games you've never played. Number 10. Metro Last Light. Let's begin this list with a little bit more of a peculiar entry with Metro Last Light, a game that many people don't even consider as horror when that's exactly what it is. This takes place in a nuclear apocalypse where everybody was completely blown to smithereens decades past. The only people who managed to survive this terrible apocalypse were the people that happened to be in the underground metro tunnels. These people ended up having to try and scavenge for food, water, and weapons, and now everything on the surface has hyper evolved due to the nuclear radiation. So now there are these mysterious beasts that wander the land that seem to be just trying to kill anything they can touch. There's such a great psychological aspect to this game's terror where you literally can't tell what's going on sometimes and what might be just a really messed up hallucination. Number 9. Siren. There's a debate that goes around sometimes about what exactly makes a game scary. What is it that can just manage to screw with you and make you want to set down the controller and never come back? Well, in the case of Siren, it really boils down to the fact that this is a really, really demented game of hide and seek. You see, all the characters in this game are each taking place in sort of these little episodes, trying to find a way to navigate through this part of Japan that has been taken over by demons. But here's the real big twist, which is that you have the ability to, with some of these characters, actually see through the eyes of your enemies. You can actually look out of the haunted gaze of a zombie and see see and hear them moan and watch them hunt down other victims. It makes it where when it's you who are in their sights, you just get extra scared because you know just how messed up what they're going to do to you is. Number 8. Corpse Party there's something really cool about getting to learn about the development of a game, seeing how it was made along with why you should play it. In the case of Corpse Party, I find it really fascinating that originally this was an RPG maker project, meaning that they essentially built this to be a turn-based goofy little thing, but it was such a uniquely freaky project. So many people were playing the free original demo and getting so scared that they couldn't finish it, but it made it where instead of pushing fans away, it drew in a different audience, the people who wanted to see something that was truly screwed up. And so because of it, they decided to move on and make a full, complete experience, which was Corpse Party. And I can say that it was definitely worth all the developmental troubles they had. This game takes place in an underground school, where this class has to try and figure out where people are, what's going on, and why their school ended up underground in the first place. By the way, a lot of people are going to die. If you're not okay with tons of of gory deaths, you might want to pick something else, because in this you're going to be seeing students try and solve mysteries, gather clues, and eventually probably meet their own gory death. Number 7. Enemy Zero Way back in the 90s, Sega was secretly really intimidated by Nintendo. Their rival company was bigger, stronger, and had a lot more money to experiment with, which means that when Sega really sat down with their developers to try and do something that would actually get attention, they decided that the best path was to make things unlike anything gamers had ever seen before. In this case, Enemy Zero is a combination of a first-person shooter and sort of like a point-and-click adventure, so you end up trying to wander around 
explore and just get the things you need to survive while simultaneously trying to crack the code of what the heck is going on in this weird world. I have to just say a short shout out to RGT85 because this guy keeps ranting and raving about this game for years and he finally talked me into buying a copy and you know what? It freaked me out way more than I ever could have anticipated. So sometimes you gotta appreciate the fact that a good Sega scare is always worth the cost. Number 6. Layers of Fear Sometimes I'll see a trailer for something and it just doesn't immediately grab me, where it looks like it's a game that just seems so bland and done a million times before that I don't give it the attention that it probably should get. And in this case, that's exactly what happened with Layers of Fear. People kept telling me that it was amazing, but for some reason I never bothered to pick it up until eventually I found it on sale. And I regret that, because this game is really really spooky in a way that I love. So basically, you're playing as this artist who has some sort of paranoia going on. The fact that he's in this giant house that seems like it might be extremely haunted, meaning that not only are ghosts trying to hunt you down, but it seems like there might be something else going along with that. Perhaps your own inner darkness trying to stalk you down. The entire game is essentially just one big hallway, is the only way to really say it, because you just go from room to room trying to pick up stuff and interact until eventually you can keep moving forward. And I like this because it really gives you a sense of helplessness, where you don't have a weapon, you don't have a way to fight back, and when death comes for you, you basically just are going to be forced to accept it. Number 5. Ill Bleed. An aspect of horror that I feel like a lot of gamers sort of forget about is the cheesiness. You see, horror itself isn't always about having the best graphics or crazy jump scares, it's also about, sometimes, just having a laugh, enjoying the silly gore and seeing craziness. And in that way, I feel like Illbleed is absolutely perfect. This is a very self-aware style game, where this character has actually been enticed into going to a fake haunted house, a place that's supposed to just just be an attraction for tourists. The issue arises that when she gets there, it turns out that it's all real. This place is more than just a fake attraction of big fake bodies, and instead is real monsters who are actually trying to hunt everybody down to the bitter end. I love this game because it's super self-aware. It simultaneously manages to poke fun at horror while also celebrating the tropes that made it famous in the first place. Number 4 obscure. If there's one rule that I think that nearly everybody can agree on, it's that everything is more fun with friends. Having somebody to back you up in sticky situations not only makes them more fun and thrilling, but it makes them more memorable. And that's part of the reason that I liked Obscure so much. In a way, it almost plays like a two-player version of Silent Hill, and that's what immediately grabbed me about it. The story itself is just so chaotic that it's hard to keep track of, but essentially it boils down to the fact that people have started doing drugs and the drugs turn them into giant monsters. What else do you need? Well, I guess the only other thing that matters is that you're going to need a lot of bullets to take them down. So this game is really, really fun in general, but it's one of those things that I've liked going back to recently because I've noticed that it's aged remarkably well. It's cool to still get to wander around through this school and see all these weird, creepy plant things. I I like that it manages to instill this sense that you're already pretty much completely screwed, so just have some fun along the way. If you see this game, it usually costs like three bucks, so definitely pick it up on any system you can find it for. Number 3. Slender the Arrival at this point, I'm pretty sure that the entire Slenderman craze has completely gone away, but I still think that what it managed to do was really, really great. It managed to make a really simple looking character, in this case a tall skinny guy in a suit, incredibly frightening by removing all sense of power. You're usually trapped in some sort of place that you don't want to be in and you don't know why you're there, and you're forced to try and just basically progress forward, continually marching into more and more dangerous situations until eventually 
until you escape or meet your own doom. I still like this game the most though because Slender the Arrival is something that a lot of people were looking at back when it first came out, but not a lot of people actually purchased. It's one of those games that is way more than a sum of its parts. Yes, of course, a bunch of YouTubers played it and were like, oh man, look at all these jump scares. But its core, it actually manages to establish a really big mythos. The fact that there is this giant monster out in the woods that seems to be able to mind control people and has his own army of demented minions is fantastic. And I feel like it doesn't get enough credit for how brilliant its design actually came out to be. Number 2. The Suffering Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to prison, a place that nobody really wants to go to, because it's where society has decided to try and shove away all its darkest, most messed up citizens. And in this case, suffering takes the entire situation one step further by deciding to open up a gate to hell. Now the people who live here are twisted into hideous monstrosities with needle legs, or the ability to pop out of the ground and grab you with tentacles, or huge behemoths that look like they only only eat human flesh. Now, this is thankfully going to be stopped by you and you alone, because you're a guy with a lot of hunger for murder and mayhem, which means that when you get a shotgun and a chainsaw, you're not going to be standing around. Now, the suffering is so exceedingly hilarious because it just doesn't care. I mean, really, this game is one of those things that you just want to sit down and play from start to finish, blasting stuff, getting torn apart, and using your own super moves to make it from one level of this prison to the next. This is something that manages to really suck you into its really gory, nasty world and just let you battle to your heart's content. Number 1. Galarians during the early ages of Resident Evil, everybody was trying to mimic its success. That franchise was just so well built, from its good controls to its crazy story, that people all wanted in on the action. Well, Galarians is undeniably something that's trying to follow in those footsteps, to the way it's controlled, to the way you just fight monsters. But the biggest difference is that you have psychic powers. So basically, instead of getting a gun, you're going to be blasting people with your mind. But there is a big catch to this, which is that everything requires two things. First off, you're going to be charging up these mental abilities, literally making it where it's not like just pulling a trigger, but instead focusing your thoughts long enough to kill the thing that's in front of you. And second of all, these psychic powers aren't infinite. You actually only have a very small amount of time so you can cast these spells. It ends up making a nice extra challenging version of something like Resident Evil. And the more you sort of just end up having to run from enemies because you don't have the mental juice to actually fight them off, it feels this extra cool sense of fear, where I actually got afraid of every single new room I was entering because sometimes I literally just did not have the fortitude to try and progress. I like a game that makes me constantly wonder if I'm going to live, if I'm going to die, or if I'm going to accidentally throw my controller at the screen in abject terror. This game is something I respect because it's so unheard of. People never talk about this and they never give it the respect that it completely deserves. And for that reason, I am giving this my pick as the absolute best horror game that you've never played. Did your favorite game not make the list? Got an idea for a future top 10? Leave it in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. I want to say a very special thank you in here, which is that a lot of the games on this list were actually recommended by you. I mean, a lot of this stuff I had not heard of until people kept mentioning it over and over again in the comment section, and I finally went, okay, I'll buy a copy on eBay. So thank you for being the super awesome, dedicated fans who actually are making me get all new frights. You guys completely rock. Oh, hey. I was just playing a little bit of Grand Theft Auto on my Darth Vader PSP. Are you curious what I'm going to come out with next? Well, if you click this button, you'll be subscribed to be the first to know. Also, if you click over here and here, you can see my latest review and my latest top 10. I promise, it was super good. Or it was really bad and I'm sure you can just make fun of me in the comments. Either way, it'll be a lot of fun. Thanks so much for watching.